going to work um, and throughout the day thinking about what you're going to come home to of an afternoon or a night time is sometimes quite distressing. Um, you never know what you're going to find. You know, more disemboweled sheep, more you know livestock gone, um, maybe even a missing family pet, you never know. But um, it's, it's definitely something that's thought about all the time. Um, we've had quite a number of sheep taken in instances during the day. Um, the thing about these wild dogs is that they kill for fun. Um, it's it's just a game to them. Like they'll run them down, disembowel them, leave them alive, um, and we've got to come around and clean up the mess. Also, we've got to go around and put down sheep that have disembowelled, still alive. Um, and this also happens to native animals as well, such as koalas and wallabies and every other native under the sun. Uh, wild dogs are found right throughout the whole of the Gold Coast. Uh, so we're finding wild dogs in some, uh, pre some pretty built up areas. Generally those dogs have been there for many years and with the, with the, the urban fringe impacting on their areas, they're finding they've got nowhere else to go. Uh, wild dogs are managed because of the impact they have on the community and also the, uh, the impact they have on our, our rare and threatened species in our conservation areas. I'm Michael Pine, I'm the senior vet here at Crumbin Wildlife Hospital. I've had the privilege of working here for the past 16 years and have seen this hospital grow from a, a small shed admitting 2,000 animals right up to a purpose-built wildlife hospital now where we're doing over 9,000 animals every year. Sadly, we see dog attacks happening day after day here with the, the animals that are admitted here into the hospital. Uh, the damage they do is often quite frightening with the animals that are admitted. Sadly, we often see animals come in that are already dead that are being presented due to dog attacks. Um, dog attacks cause a lot of crushing injuries and the infection that is subsequent to the bite wounds is often really severe. Um, I'm sure we only see the tip of the iceberg with what really happens out there simply because dog attacks usually end in fatalities and um, a lot of the dead animals just simply aren't brought into us. So, it's, it's very extensive what happens when, when dogs attack our wildlife. The dog bite wounds you know, on an animal cause a severe infection and sadly those animals that don't make it into our wildlife hospital or don't find their way to any vet clinic, um, those animals would suffer severe infection and the, the death would be quite slow and um, you know, these animals may survive for anything up to a couple of weeks after a dog attack before it gets the better of them and they pass away and the, the suffering you know, linked to those dog attacks and that infection really would be immense and you know, it would be an awful way for these wild animals to pass away. So here on the Gold Coast we've conducted a lot of research into wild dogs over the last couple of years. Wild dogs can carry a range of diseases and parasites that can impact people and pets. So probably the main one we're concerned about on the Gold Coast is about 65% of wild dogs that were sampled here uh, were positive for echinococcus, which is hydata tapeworms, which can cause cysts which that impair organ function in people and ultimately could, can result in um, severe injuries or even, even death. So within the city of Gold Coast, we control dogs in a number of different ways. One way being the trapping, the trapping program. We trap 365 days of the year, right across the Gold Coast from north to south, east to west. Um, we also, in conjunction with the landholders, we, uh, we, we bait on council reserves as well. We do a lot of, uh, lot of monitoring, pre-monitoring beforehand and, and afterwards to see if, uh, if there's any dogs about. And it also eliminates the risk of uh, non-target species and domestic animals as well. If obviously if there's a lot of domestic animals in the area, we'll um, yeah, generally won't bait there, we'll look at other methods. I personally work with City of Gold Coast um, Pest Animal Management Officers. Um, I do camera surveillance on my own property. Um, I do trapping and baiting with all coordinated programs. Um, any sightings that I have and things like that, always notify Council. Um, let them know what's happening and they can also, you know, they're more than happy to help out with anything that you need really. There's been several instances of unwelcome contact with wild dogs. We personally have a neighbour who's a veterinarian. She was put up a tree by a pack of five wild dogs approximately three years ago. There's been instances where there's been pets taken off people's verandas, killed in their backyards poultry slaughtered, wild stock slaughtered. So this, we saw that as a need to coordinate this baiting campaign and try and get rid of, the, rid of these feral dogs. We've had occasions where we've had cows down calving and the dogs have killed the cow while she's down calving. They've taken calves. Since we've been running this baiting campaign, we haven't had these problems. 
That's why it's important to keep this campaign going. My name is Peter Yon. I'm a fourth generation landholder in the Gold Coast hinterland at Numanbar Valley. We saw the need for a coordinated baiting program several years ago when we were getting hammered by these wild dogs. So we've sort of got together all the relevant agencies, landowners, land care groups, and we do a coordinated baiting program. Yeah, the baiting program involves getting everyone to bait at the same time, which is a very good idea because you don't know where these dogs are going to be at any given time. In our district, we have quite a few landholders who are baiting and involved in the program. Uh, some of these landholders used authorised people to collect their baits, put them on their properties if they're absentee landlords. A lot of the others put them out on their own properties. They identify the hot spots where they always pick up the dogs and that's where the baits go. Uh, so one of the ways that residents can help us control wild dogs on the Gold Coast here is by reporting those sightings. A lot of the time we don't often hear about some of the issues that have occurred. Uh, we can hear second-hand stories of what's happened in the past and without us getting that information we can't act on it so reporting those sightings is a huge part of it. So the City of Gold Coast also asks residents to be mindful and respectful of some of the signage that we have to put up to close down areas where we're conducting these pest control measures. Um, sometimes people aren't aware of how important this is. So even just by having someone walking through that area can reduce our efforts in a big way. So the City of Gold Coast also encourages responsible pet ownership. So this includes dissexing, microchipping, vaccinating, and making sure those pets are contained to their property. So we also encourage those dog owners to keep their dogs on the lead. That's not just for their protection, but to also protect our native wildlife as well.